split between content and development of Float Playing Club, our early access platform. Um, and we've been in desperate need of help for quite some time. More help than we can get from Brandon with his camera reviews and Taryn with electric and we've bikes like and we've never keyboards. truly had a pre-production hire for Line of Sight Tips. No. That was sort of the intent with John, but he bit into Tech Quickie and became the Tech Quickie guy in a which way that- Which is great. Which is great in a way that no one anticipated and he only rarely finds time to to pitch in on the LTT side of things. So we said we were gonna hire two to three and we decided, uh, we decided to go with three. The decision's made and those folks will be, two of them had to relocate, um, but those folks will be heading out here sometime in the next, actually about three weeks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so. And that's exciting. Cause like over doubling the team essentially and and like tripling we, it. we've we've grown these other sectors of linus media group a lot and Editing, just never sales. touched our side ever yeah um and this doesn't necessarily mean that like we're just not going to show up on camera as much or almost at all anymore that's not the plan um john has already done a bunch of line sectiv scripts like if you've seen any of our console stuff the xbox one and the playstation 4 yep. xbox one s and playstation 4 pro Yep. To be more specific. Yep. Those were both largely John scripts. And what this will do, I've got a lot of people asking about more content. No. No. I do not intend for us to release Better. more than a video per day. But what I do want you guys to see is more stuff like PlayStation 4 water cooling. Projects. Great video. Yeah. But a video like that is extraordinarily time consuming. And the guys that we're bringing in will not only have more time, but they also have very unique skill sets. Yes. So one of them I would consider to be kind of an all rounder, um, kind of similar to me in that way, like pretty self-taught, except that he also has some coding experience. One right. of them yeah. has an engineering background. Yeah. Dude's got an engineering degree. So if we wanted to create a trebuchet for Channel Superfund, we finally have someone on staff who can have us not get killed yeah. while we're trying to do that. Um, the other one has over a decade of like IT background and like has has like replaced electrical components on board yep. and has gone around like fixing SNES and NES systems yep. and like all this other kind of cool stuff and is very interested and good at that. So we're bringing in three very different people. Um, I, at least one of them has a fair bit of experience with uh, 3D modeling and 3D printing. Uh, so, so we're bringing in a bunch of different skill sets that are going to unlock a lot of ideas that we've had on the back burner for a long time and just haven't had the time to learn how to. And this shouldn't do. just make it so that there's more like really awesome, cool, in-depth projects, but it should also free up Linus and I to do things like Scrapyard Wars. Yes. It's been a long time since Scrapyard Wars up uh, season four. It's it's. It's difficult to do. It's extremely difficult to do when you have two people that can do the pre-production for projects and you take both of them out. So I've got uh, a lot of people speculating, no, Jerry is not coming to work here. They're all Canadian. Yeah. So I'll put to rest any speculation about Jerry. Um, and because we just said they're all Canadian, it's yeah. not like It's not Wendell. Yeah. yeah, he's also American though. Yeah. It's, it's not like we didn't we didn't plunder like hardware connects. We didn't no. plunder anyone. These are all nope. new guys. So These guys are fresh blood and we're really excited to bring them in and uh, and and really ramp things up in the next little bit. Just so everybody knows, Wendell like has a, a real job. Like I don't I don't know if people know this because a lot of people And I like the existence of level one techs. Yeah. And I, I like what he's doing over there and I don't Yeah. Yeah, if you guys actually could help me out a little bit, I'd appreciate it. If you can ask Wendell when the crap He's going to come on WAN show with us and Five, talk about level four, one techs because that's, been, that's been on one. both yeah. of our calendars for quite some time. Just tweet that guy. Be like, yo, hey, Linus is like, why aren't you on my show? And he'd be like, we want you on the show because it's been a long time. No excuses, brah. Brah. Okay. Brah. What else we got? Brah. Um, New PC one year test. How's it going? It is going. It's going. I, I checked in on it a couple days ago. Have you been back there? Yeah. Yep. It's going. They're all running. Uh, Next dock turns Intel's compute card into a two-in-one laptop. This was posted on the forum by Dawson Wuhaj. 
And the original article here is from The Verge. The ancient okay. Oh, yeah, this thing. Yeah. Them Looks pretty cool. So they announced the, the compute card at CES, uh, which was uh, back in early January. So a credit card sized computer. So this is the follow up to the compute stick, which was a stick sized computer. And it's essentially a full computer. So it's got CPU, GPU, wireless connectivity, and it's designed to let hardware manufacturers easily add computer internals to smart devices. So it's all built around a single upgradable standard. So the next dock is one of the first products announced that looks to take advantage of the compute card. Uh, the company is listed as one of Intel's regional partners for the compute card, and it's a touchscreen device with two slots on the side. One for the compute card, which contains the actual computer of the device, and one for a larger custom USB-C module for swapping in and out ports and battery as the situation requires. Not a huge fan of that. I wish it kind of just had ports and a battery. Yeah. But Apparently, it can be converted into different form factors using a keyboard and kickstand accessory. So they hope that by separating the OS and the processor from the rest of the hardware, they can prolong the lifespan of the computer and help reduce the environmental impact. Very cool. Um, what else we got here? I guess that's pretty much everything from my side. Uh, Opera Neon is Opera's new concept browser, so that's cool. And um, thanks for watching the WAN show. Do you have anything else that you Wendell's want to say? Wendell's playing video games right now. Yeah, he's, it's like he's not even doing anything more important than being on the WAN show with us. So what? Okay, what, what's his Twitch? What's his Twitch? Team get this. PGP. Okay, so Twitch. TV slash Team PGP. Guys, we gotta fix this. Okay, so everyone get over there and like cause a cause a riot. Okay. Everybody cause a riot. You can tell him I said so. No, don't tell him I said so, actually. That would be better. Let, I want to see a riot in Wendell's Twitch chat in the next 30 seconds, or I'm ending the stream. Actually, I'm going to end the stream in 30 seconds anyway. There but, it goes. Okay, do we have a riot? Yeah. Okay, very good. Okay, the riot level is about a 4 out of 10. I need to see about a 12 out of 10 here, guys. Come on. Riot. Riot. It's Team PGP. Team PGP. Let's get that link going again. Riot. All right. So thank you guys for tuning into the WAN show. We will see you again next week. Same bat time, same bat channel, all that good stuff. We hope you guys had as much fun as we did. Um, huge shout out again to Focus Right for hooking us up on this audio gear. We're super stoked, especially now that we figured out the um, sort of bummer that was the uh, USB conflict resource conflict that was causing our cutouts um oh this is really important if you guys are not already subscribed to channel super fun i'm linking that in the chat right now all the episodes of nerd sports oops yep 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 go subscribe to channel super fun all the nerd sports episodes are up so go check them out um also right um if you want to get early access to Linus Tech Tips, Channel Super Fun, and Tech Quickie videos. Float Plane Club does exist, so uh, you can go check that out as well. I'll go ahead and throw you guys a link. Actually, it's kind of amazing. I mean, do, do we want to tell people like how many people are subscribed? Uh, no. Should we say that it's more than hundreds? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yes. So, we've got a lot of people. I'm going to post this... Uh, Post the link to where you can join the Float Playing Club. The video and audio quality is quite wonderful. Yep. We've got a lot of great, great feedback from... Tremendous. Tremendously knowledgeable people that the video and audio... Actually, the audio is one of the biggest differences for me. Because I'm usually watching on like a laptop or a, um, or a phone. So a small display anyway. Um, but listening with in-ears... One of those things that you've been asking for, Yeah. we tried it and it like works, but it's like really scary for the speakers, so like, no. But later, yes. Does it have three letters? The first of which is H? No. Oh. Don't, Killing I don't, wanna, I don't literally don't want anyone to know. Oh, okay. But it's two. It's two. Oh, okay, I think I know which one. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um... All right, so guys, go check out, uh, go subscribe to Channel Super Fun. Go check out Flow Playing Club. Yes. Um, audio quality really is better. You guys are doing almost no compression, right? I like. 
big change things all the time. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying I don't really know what's going on all the time. Uh, so like <laughs> a while ago, yeah. No, not really. Um, okay. <laughs> all right. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Oh yeah, the outro. Oh. Which has no music, so whatever. All right. <laughs> I really don't think there could be anything more boring than network switches. I mean, the box is boring, the product's boring. Like, they even look boring. Look at them, just metal boxes. But I have something I'm legitimately excited about today. This is the first 10 gigabit network switch designed for like prosumer use at a much more reasonable price point, $250, compared to the kind of money that we've spent on the past on the 10 gigabit switches in our server room. But is this even the only option, this one from ASUS? Or are you better off picking up one of these suckers off eBay? Well, let's find out, shall we? Phoenix's Aria headphones come complete with a cardioid mic and acoustic chambers constructed of Japanese pine wood. Check them out at the link in the video description. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna have to clear some space on my uh, test bench here. So the first question I need to answer, and I can do this while we open this puppy up and have a look at it, is what is the point of a faster network infrastructure in my home? Does it make my interneting better? Can I load Neopets faster? And the answer is no. If the only thing you use your home network for is browsing the internet, this will not make any lick of difference whatsoever, unless somehow you have an internet connection that is faster than one gigabit, the speed of a standard commodity network switch. So then the next obvious question that people are always asking me is, well, if it doesn't make your internet faster, what's the point? And where does it even go? Do I replace my wireless router with it? The answer is no, you don't. It actually works in conjunction with your existing router, whether it's an aftermarket one or whether it's one that was provided by your internet service provider. So what you do is your internet goes in where it always did, and instead of plugging your computer into this bad boy, you plug this switch into your original router slash wireless access point slash modem and all of that good stuff. So all of this accomplishes two things. First and foremost, it allows you to plug more physical devices into your network than would previously fit. So you've gone from this to now this. A lot better, right? But that could have just as easily been achieved with a cheapo $20 switch. So what the XG U2008 brings to the table is it adds these two, what I'm gonna call fast lanes. These are 10 gigabit ports, so they run at 10 times the speed of standard gigabit networking. This is useful for a couple of different use cases. So number one, let's say you have a lot of people in a house or an office who wanna edit 4K video or who wanna watch uncompressed Blu-ray rips at the same time. You plug all those guys into all these other ports here. Boom, 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 boom. And then you plug a server machine with faster networking on board and fast storage into one of the 10 gig ports. Now all of a sudden these guys can all get their full network speed off of that same source device. Pretty cool, right? Another potential scenario is let's say that you've got a new gaming rig with some ballin' out SSD and you wanna get files off of, I don't know, a Steam library or something elsewhere on your network much faster. Well, an SSD, even a SATA one, can do somewhere in the neighborhood of four to six times the speed of standard gigabit networking. So by adding 10 gigabit, all of a sudden, you can transfer 10 times faster to one other machine on the network off of that same server. So let's do a practical demonstration then. 
Here are my 10 gigabit ports right here. This one is leading to a fast storage machine over in our server room over there. And this one is going to go into the 10 gigabit networking ports that are built into the X99E10GWS that I used for my desk PC. Hopefully what I'm about to do doesn't shut down the network in the rest of the building, but we will find out soon enough. What? Oh crap. Uh, okay, one second. My server room needs some work, I know. So here we go. In a moment, this should pick up here. And there we go. 10 gigabit per second speed. If you're not seeing that, by the way, you might need to upgrade your cables. We're using Cat6A. So let's go ahead and, uh, and have a look at what a 10 gigabyte file transfer might look like on a 10 gig network. Very nice. Wow. You know what? I think I was totally wrong. This does make Neopets better. But I promised a weird eBay alternative, didn't I? Yes, I did. And I'm delivering this, my friends. Oh, it's heavy. Is the Quanta Computer LB6M. This is an entry level kind of enterprise grade 10 gigabit network switch that seems to be being phased out of some big data center somewhere because these things are all over eBay for around the same price, 250 bucks. You get two power supplies that have a reassuring whine to them and you get 24 10 gigabit ports along with four regular gigabit ethernet ports, a couple management ports, and a console port. So while you will have to deal with some funny business, for example, you're gonna have to use these SFP plus direct attach copper cables or like fiber optic modules in order to connect everything. And these can be quite expensive. Uh, anywhere from kind of 20 to even over a hundred dollars a pop and you will need to have the same matching hardware on the other side for your network cards but again there's more good news because these SFP plus cards can sometimes be had for cheaper than RJ45 equivalents but if you're willing to do some fooling around because there are a lot of different firmwares out there and you're willing to get all command line Linux on it, this baby looks like it could be a pretty good value if you want more 10 gigabit and you're willing to give up the convenience and the uh, silence of a desktop switch like that. Squarespace. I don't know why they call it Squarespace because you could build your website any shape you want. It could even be a square or even a rectangle. Yes, my friend, square or rectangle. But what all Squarespace sites have in common is they look gorgeous and they work across any device you could want. And they make it easy to build. They offer live chat and email support 24 seven. It's inexpensive starting at only 12 bucks a month. And every website comes with a ton of great features including commerce, Cover Pages, which allows you to have a beautiful one-page online presence in minutes. Support for Apple News format, so you can have a Squarespace blog module and access like millions of potential readers. And the best part is you don't have to take my word for it. You can start a trial with no credit card required and start building your website today. Then use offer code LTT to get 10% off your first purchase. So thanks for watching, guys. If you disliked this video, hit that dislike button. But if you liked it, hit the like button, get subscribed, maybe even consider checking out where to buy the products we feature today at the link in the video description. Also down there, we've got our merch store with shirts like this one and other stuff. I think we have posters now, too. Wow, it's amazing. Ah! And uh, something else. What else do we have down there? All right, our community forum, which you should totally join. Now that you're done doing all that stuff, you're probably wondering what to watch next. So check out our latest video over on Channel Superfun. Welcome, friends, to Pimp My Wi-Fi. Is that how pimps talk? I actually don't know, but all I know is Pimp My Wi-Fi <laughs> sounds an awful lot like Pimp My Wife. And that is not the same thing.
So this be my neighbor John's house. Okay, I'll stop talking like that. That's awful. John runs a home business making sports scoreboards that are both affordable to purchase and operate thanks to their battery-backed solar-powered design. And they also operate in all weather conditions. This is Canada after all. And radio control. Oh yeah, that too. My scoreboards are designed, built, and assembled right here in Canada. Uh, the microcontroller chip that runs the whole system is, uh, again, designed and programmed by me. I've written the software to do this. The printed circuit boards are, again, designed by me, the electronics and so on. The PC boards themselves are uh, built in Richmond, B.C. They're sent back to me as a blank board. I assemble the components in it and uh, test it right here. Then, once all that's done and tested and everything's okay, I uh, build and assemble the coils right here, again, in the shop. Well, that's great, John. But what I couldn't help noticing when we were working on that homemade CPU water block that let me cheat in Scrapyard Wars Season 2 is how horribly out of date some of your gear was. I mean, an Athlon 64 PC running your CNC? USB drives to transfer files from one computer to another? Are you still using this computer? The entire business's backups are on a single hard drive. And are you still using the ISP provided wireless access point with the name TELUS 1995? I didn't think anyone had done that since 1995. No, no, I'm afraid I'll need to reject this reality and substitute my own. Which is why we're here over a year later. And Ubiquity Networks, the makers of the access point I ended up buying in Simlim Square in Pimp My Wi-Fi Episode 1, has agreed to sponsor a full tech makeover for my neighbor John. Even going as far as to send out one of their technicians to make sure everything's running A-OK, -okay, super hunky-dory, and paying for us to have Mark the Contractor uh, help us with anything that might involve power tools. So let's get crack a lacking <laughs> Let's run through the rationale behind the gear we're using. Our Unify Security Gateway Pro is essentially a router that can be managed from the Unify controller. It handles our packet processing and DHCP. Our Unify Switch 8 handles both active and passive power over Ethernet with enough ports for all of the devices we have on site. Our Unify AP Pro wireless access points are designed to handle a much higher client load, but our deployment here is more about killer 802.11 AC coverage so that dropped Skype calls are a thing of the past. And the Unify Cloud Key is the low power Linux computer on a stick that manages all these other network devices to keep them working perfectly. Okay, so obviously this has got to go. Um, there, this is a single access point. It's up in the corner of the house. I think I have better reception from my house than John has in certain areas of his house. So here's what I'm thinking in terms of getting full coverage in this place with, I had planned for three access points. So I wanted one up here for wife approval factor. Um, and that will mostly service the soundscape entertainment sound recording studio in there and one of the kids' bedrooms because there will be a hard line in the master bedroom for the computer that they operate there. So if we have slightly less reception to the master, then it's not the end of the world. I wanted to put it here. The wife gave that, gave that the old absolutely no way. Okay, so that'll probably do the upstairs, right? Looking at, okay. Okay, for the downstairs, to keep cabling simple, I wanted to have the access point in the garage, which is just on the other side of this wall. So that means great strength for the, where the business is operating. That should cover this living room area really well. Um, now, we got one, two, three walls between it and the den. However, we want to bring one more out of the crawl space and put it here to cover the backyard. And then I'm thinking, hopefully, the back half of the bottom floor. Oh, yeah. So the cable runs that those gentlemen are getting going up there are all going to come down to this corner behind me where we're going to have Ubiquiti's edge router light 
we're gonna have one of their PoE switches so that we don't have to run additional power to all of our access points. We're gonna have a proper NAS with real-time redundancy. And finally, we're gonna have one of their little controller doodads that makes it so we don't have to have a dedicated PC to handle seamless handoff from access point to access point while clients are roaming around the house. So the great thing about any tech project is you don't have to create drama like you do with a lot of reality shows. Um, the plan was to have an ADSL line down here so we could move our networking stuff downstairs and run everything out from there into the crawl space. But we actually don't know if either of these phone lines are live. Okay, so I'm going up to see if I can find out where those cables terminate. So I gotta go, I don't know, what, about 10 feet over that way? Okay. Oh, ow, my head. Oh, crap, there's a, okay, there's not a clear path. There's there's a kind of a wall here. Like, a li not kind of a wall, there's literally a wall. So, give me a moment. Try not to fall through the ceiling. Pull what we call a, a Dennis here. You know what, no, I think I got him, I think I got him. I think I see, uh, I think I see what's going on here. So it looks like only two are connected. Two of the wire pairs on the base cables? Yeah. Okay, so that would explain it, because you need four pairs for uh, voice and data. Okay, cool. So all we got to do is lines. connect them then, right? There we go. Ooh, okay. So that's how that goes over to that corner. Uh, one of them is actually in this um, this guy. So one of them has, uh, let me have a look here. Yeah, that's that's it, hold on. This one coming in here? Mm -hmm. So that one looks like it has three wires. Oops. In the older installations, they didn't actually have to use, like, a, go by the actual standard color coding. So you could get one color that is this, but it's actually, it has another purpose. <laughs> Great. Well, I can tell you right now, these colors look to be kind of random because the red and the green are not connected to red and green on the other side, I don't think. Okay, so what, I just need to go up there with a roll of electrical tape and twist them together, or? No, that's not ideal. Um, it, it might work, but... Um, it's apparently what was done in the first place. Yes, I, I, I do see that. I, I can't guarantee how reliable that would be for data if it did work. Well, it stopped but. working. So, yes. about that reliable. Yes. <laughs> we can certainly try it and see what happens. We can try it and see if it works immediately now. Yes. And then we can twist some caps on it and make sure it doesn't go anywhere at that okay. point. So, do you want me to go back up there and uh, start twisting wires together? Or? Sure, we can We can try that. Um, and the other thing is, if we had the... I don't know how accessible that room is. He's running the line through the closet. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Yeah. <laughs> so that's why we didn't want the uh, the networking closet upstairs. Okay. Some some thought was given to this, just not quite enough. <laughs> just, <laughs> the Linus Tech Tips way. <laughs> red to red, green to green. Good so far. Oh, it looks like the black came off. Okay, so this is an improvement over before. It's flashing faster now. Do we, do we want solid? Hey! We've got a line. Okay. It worked. All right, my uh, my ghetto pimp style, just twist them together. I mean, we'll fix it, but um, that'll awesome. Work. That'll work for now. Good, one problem solved. Let's just wait for the next one to happen. So behind me in progress, we've got George leading the charge on creating a custom enclosure for that CNC mill that we used to create the custom water block that should dampen some of the noise that comes out of it, allowing John to have it running during the night, something that he currently cannot do due to noise regulations in this neighborhood. So in summary, what George is gonna be building is a two by four construction shroud that's gonna allow for all the existing functionality, so easy access to things like these uh, drive bands here in case they need to be replaced. The ability for the hose to continue to take away the waste material while the machine is working. And most importantly, a complete enclosure with you know baffles for exhaust vents 
to take away as much of the noise as possible. So we've got half of our Ethernet runs done. These are the ones to the master bedroom as well as the closet upstairs. All that's left now is the one that goes through the crawl space out to the back and a surprise one that goes over to where the new ADSL line comes in to where the networking closet is going to be here in this corner. So I actually wouldn't mind getting in here to do the actual PC upgrade. Mercifully, the old one has been apparently taken out back and shot because it's not here anymore. But Mike is currently working on just getting all the latest firmwares running on the security gateway, the PoE switch, and the cloud controller. So I'm going to go shopping. So these are going to run the CNC mill as well as the coil winding machine. And they should be just much smaller, uh, quieter. There's no fans, so they're less likely to collect dust. Should be a better overall solution, not to mention they're faster. I swear, if you want Windows Update to do something, be in a hurry. All right, let's do this thing. I'll take one of these. Actually, no, I'm kidding. I'll take a couple of the VE247s here. One. So we run into a small problem. I just kind of assumed we could get a monitor arm at Best Buy, but Brandon looked it up and everything's online only. So I don't know where to buy a monitor arm. We'll try Visions, but honestly, I don't have a lot of hope for this. Well, then I will take them. Thank you, good sir. This is a lot more than I wanted to pay, but these do look really nice and these should work perfectly for what we need. And they had exactly two. So that just saved my bacon. We now have everything we need. We're ready to head back to the job site. It's typical, right? You go away for an hour because you got to buy something. You come back. Where is everybody? Must be on lunch. OK, so these are all programmed? Yes, they are. OK, so. Why don't we go ahead and these ones we'll deal with in the corner once Praxis is done with his wiring up there. But why don't we go ahead and install these then? Sure thing. Let's get through All right, it. let's do it. I got this. I got this. Got this, bro. But I might have to take off my pimp sunglasses because I can't see a damn thing. Is, are you going to fit in there with your hat on? <laughs> He's trying to get me to take off the hat. No, don't do it. But. No, I'm not taking off the hat. <laughs> taking off the hat is the wrong thing to do for any pimp. Pimp always wears his hat. Oh, I see. OK, all right. Makes sense. Yeah, makes yep. sense. OK, okay. so right. we're just basically a two by four. Just a cutoff, just a small cutoff. Keep going until it starts teeter totter. Oh, that's pretty close. Beautiful, yeah, right there. Right. Now I can take the two by four right here. There you go. And then we can slide it right on. Okay, Excellent. Nice. 